Hello and welcome to The Open Newsroom. Uh, my name is Christine Bohan. I'm the deputy editor at The Journal and I'm the editor for The Good Information Project. And you'll hopefully have seen some of the work that we've been doing as part of The Good Information Project here at The Journal, which is a big new series where every month we cover critical issues that matter to our readers. So each month there is a different topic. Last month was about Ireland and China's relationship. Before that, it was about what work is going to look like after COVID. And this month is all about housing. So we want to find out what questions you'd like answered and hopefully get some fair, objective information out there about housing because housing in Ireland is broken. It's the one thing that political parties in this country seem to be able to agree on, uh, from high rent prices to investment funds, bulk buying up chunks of housing estates to people not being able to afford homes. Things are not good uh, with the housing system in Ireland. So I'm to bash these topics out and to talk about housing. Uh, I'm joined by my colleagues Conal Thomas and Aoife Barry. Uh, we're also joined by Dr. Rory Hearn of Maynooth University, uh, whose work has been at the forefront of critiquing existing housing policies and putting forward ideas to fix them. So for the next 30 minutes, we're just going to be talking about housing. We're going to be talking about how we're covering it, how we're covering uh, these topics in the newsroom. Uh, it's great to have you all here. Thanks for being uh, with us. Hi, everyone. Hello. How's it going? Conal, I'm going to start with you. Um, and when we talk about housing in Ireland, I think it's important to talk about how it wasn't always as bad as it is right now because Ireland actually had quite a decent track record throughout you know, chunks of the 20th century um, of building large scale housing estates, giving grants to people to help them buy homes. So can you talk what's changed in the last few years that's made housing um, such of a mess right now? I suppose like it would probably go right back to the recession. I mean, the crash happened, there was mass unemployment, there was very few houses being built and we're now at a state, state 13 years later. And I suppose the question for me as well is not so much what's changed, but what hasn't changed. I think it's really important to point out that we have seen pretty much 10 years of very much the same types of policy being rolled out year in, year out, and yet it hasn't really made a dent in terms of delivering the level of, of, of housing that we need. So this is why it's a really interesting time now to talk about it. The coalition government have been in place for just a year now. There's, there's housing policy on the table. We can probably talk a little bit about that with Rory, but I think a good way of summing it up would be last year the National Economic and Social Council wrote a major report on housing in Ireland and said that without change in the system we're condemned to an endless sequence of isolated measures that seek to generate a little bit more vi viability, a slight reduction in risk, a marginal increase in supply, a slightly higher share of affordable housing and a minor shift from greenfield to brownfield development. So that report really just brought home how we need a real shift in policy and whether that's going to be like the SRI recommended last week borrowing for seven billion euro to embark on this huge um, house, house building uh, programme that remains to be seen. Rory, you've written that successive governments have focused on housing as an investment asset rather than a place that people should live um, and it's led to this unaffordable housing system. Can you, can you explain that and talk us through that? Like how have governments been doing that?
Is this you, is this situation unique to Ireland? When you talk about this wooing of of you know big investment funds, like is this something that Ireland alone is doing, or are we seeing this trend across, say, Western European countries that are in a similar situation? If Rory mentioned generation rent there, and you had this excellent piece up on the journal um, a few weeks ago, where you spoke to almost 100 people about their experiences of the housing crisis and how what it's actually meant for their lives and for their um, like inability to to buy homes or to find you know secure places to live. What were the biggest themes that you saw coming out in that? Like what what stories were people telling you about their experiences of trying to live in Ireland? And you talked about the shame there. I mean, is there anger coming through from people as well? Or is it more of a kind of a sense of like frustration or this is what Ireland is like? Like, how would you describe like where where were people at in terms of the emotion?
Yeah, it's a big change even from like, say, like a generation ago when housing wouldn't be seen as something you need to, to be lucky in order to, to, to have somewhere to live. Um, Rory, kind of on a similar theme, you've been collecting people's stories on Twitter um, under the hashtag End Housing Crisis. What stood out to you about the stories that people have been telling you about uh, their experiences of housing? Do you think there's a generational divide there in between, say, people in their 20s and 30s who are maybe at the forefront of trying to and struggling with high rents and trying to find somewhere to live and people maybe who were able to buy a house on one income and who are now maybe in their 60s and 70s and don't fully understand the difficulties that there are now? Or do you think that the crisis has become so kind of fully blown, like fully fledged at this stage that it is um, clear to everybody that something needs to be done and needs to be fixed? That's probably one for Rory. Yeah. 
Yeah. Speaking just on affordable housing there, this is probably a question for, for Rory and Conal. Um, kind of probably about affordable housing and the lack of it as well. Um, there was a really interesting announcement last week from Johnny Ronan saying that he's going to build a new suburb in Dublin city centre at Poolbeck um, with almost 4,000 homes and about 1,000 of them will be social or affordable homes, which is one of the bigger announcements that we've heard around um, affordable homes and social homes in, in recent years. Is there enough being done to deliver affordable homes at the moment? And I'm going to guess that your answer is going to be no. Uh, but just when you're, going, when you're expanding on that, like, is there if there's more that needs to be done, who needs to be doing it? Is this a government issue? Is this for developers? Is this for local authorities? Like, how do, how do we solve the problem? Well, I suppose it, under under sort of legislation is where there's what's known as a part five where you need to deliver 10% social housing. But that, that's very minimal. I'm sure, Rory, you'd agree that that's nowhere near enough. Um, it's interesting looking at the, the Johnny Ronan proposal down in Pool Bay because that's within uh, the SDZ which is a strategic development zone and essentially I'm not quite sure whether getting the figure for 3,800 homes and considering that the SDZ itself is only uh, the document actually says it has capacity for three to three and a half thousand obviously we're talking about developer-led uh, housing here again and, and the headline announcement within that which is uh, Rory can probably talk a little bit more about the, the policy side of it but what I thought was quite interesting that the headline in that was a thousand social and affordable homes and in the first instance I'm not sure whether they're getting a thousand because my, my, my working is about 800 650 of them and bear in mind this was in 2000 and I think it was 16 17 councillors pushed really hard to get those affordable units on that site 650 but the question is if a two-bed apartment cost you 400,000 to build right by the most recent estimates uh, and if uh, you're building affordable units staying in Pool Bay, Dublin Bay South, which is one of the most expensive areas in the city, how on the earth are they going to be affordable and who are they going to be affordable to? I've spoken with council officials who are concerned that these affordable units are going to come out at about six to 700,000. Now, even with something like the Service Sites Fund, which could take 50 grand off that, even if they increase that to 100,000, you could still be looking at a half a million euro for an affordable house in the city. But Rory, you might be able to comment as well on that. Or how, do you, how, do you, how do you increase the supply of affordable housing? Because it seems to be this term that's thrown about a lot, but nobody quite knows what it means. Conal, could you delve into that a little bit there? Because I think, you know, what Rory's talking about, that kind of 
pub- the idea of public land being being sold off. We've seen a lot of controversy around that in the last couple of years, like around sites like O'Devany Gardens in Dublin, the Oscar Trainer Road site in Dublin. It seems like every time there's an attempt to sell off large tracts of public land in, and in Dublin City in particular, there's huge controversy when, when, when it tries to get done. So why is it always so controversial? I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's a number of key factors, I suppose, behind it, Christine. I mean, the first instance, as Rory was saying, like, this is public land. In many instances, you look at, we look at O'Devany Gardens, we look at Oscar Trainer Road, th- this, this is publicly owned land, and it shows it is essentially being handed over to developer to build houses on. Now, the councils would say, so, I mean, it's by way of a bit of background, I suppose. There's always, there's, there's always been a back and forth at a local authority level of trying to increase the level of, say, social or affordable homes within these sites, right? So that's where you hear, that's where the, where the controversy comes from, that's where the coverage comes from, because councillors and certain parties will say, we need to increase the level of affordable ho- homes or cost rental or uh, social housing on the site. And there's always this back and forth between the council, the council officials and the developer. And sometimes it goes the way, sometimes it doesn't. You know, the O'Devany Gardens deal came down kind of last minute thing and that's now gone in for planning permission. Um, Oscar Trainer Road was, 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 was rejected. But again, you know, part of it, I suppose you could say, is about ideology or political ideology. You know, you'll generally find the parties at the left of the councils will will reject an outright sell-off, what they would call a sell-off to a developer, whereas the you know the, the centre-right parties will say, look, this is the only way to deliver housing. But I suppose the key thing, the the, the question I've always had about it, and, and Rory, you might be able to touch on this, is that when you speak to council officials about this and you say, well why are you handing it over to the developer? And they'll simply say, well, they can deliver it faster and quicker and cheaper than we can. And I've never really been convinced by that argument because it seems to me that if we were able to do this in the past, why can't we do it now? Would you agree? There is an interesting point to this, though, but I think historically, or when I say historically, the last 10 years, or like when I've been covering this as a, as a reporter, the, the impression I very much get, Rory, is that the department is reluctant to give the council any more freedoms than it's, well, it's taken away so many of them, I suppose, since Phil Hogan was in charge. But it's, it's, un, it's totally reluctant to give 
council's autonomy regarding house building. I mean, you can barely get a social, uh, you know, a shovel in the ground for a social housing country without the department giving the go ahead. So even if the state could borrow, do you think there is a a, a fundamental problem in thinking in the department itself? And I'm not talking about parties here. I'm not talking about political parties. I'm talking about the Department of Housing itself does seem to be a core issue here that, that isn't talked about as much. Cole, you have an article on the journal today talking about putting a right to housing into the constitution. Um, we saw a few Fianna Fáil senators came out on Friday um, saying that there should be a referendum on this in, in the next 18 months. Will this actually happen? Will we see this? And if it does, I suppose more importantly, will it actually make any difference? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, uh, the constitutional right to housing has been, I suppose, in, uh, up for discussion for a few years. Um, um, and Rory's actually talked about this in the past as well. Uh, uh, Fianna Fáil, yeah, Fianna Fáil Senators put forward as a private member's motion bill last week to put it into the Constitution. Now, the Housing Commission, which has been newly established by Minister uh, for Housing, Dara O'Brien, will probably be examining this later in the year. The question really is, though, would putting, uh, would amending the Constitution uh, to put a right to housing in there actually get homes built and that would be my question i suppose yeah there's a, there's two ways you can look at it you can say it's, it's a balancing act and therefore because it's in our constitution the government would inevitably have to act in some way change policy and and rethink things but speaking to to rachel walsh who is a property rights um lecturer in trinity college she would argue which i think is quite interesting that there is no barrier to changing policy there is no barrier to legislating for better policy which would allow more houses to build to be built or to change housing policy itself so you know the question is would putting a constitutional right to housing in would it would putting a right to housing in the constitution or for adequate housing be more would it be a gesture would it force government to act um, Rory you might be able to touch upon it but I, I do think I do think there's a strong argument for saying that yes it would it would be very much a I suppose a um, an expression of, of, our, of our intent as a country but the question really would be, if the, there, there are, if the barriers aren't there, then would that make a difference if we could just change our policy and legislate better anyway without having to put that right in the Constitution?
We just have a final, a couple of questions uh, left to ask, but viewers, if anybody has any more questions or comments uh, for the panel, uh, please do uh, leave them and we will ask them. Uh, we've one comment there from a reader saying, it is not viable for a private individual to afford an investment property with our punitive tax rates and interest rates, which are twice the EU average. Many of the 200,000 vacant properties would come on stream if it was viable to let them, which feels a little bit like a kind of a repeat of some of the policies that we've had uh, in, in the past, I'm not sure how. Um, which that would change things. Eva, can I can I go to you and just talk to you about a piece that you did on the journal as well, where you asked um, Irish people living abroad about their experiences of housing and how it differed from Ireland and how they were able to to live and to rent and to buy um, in other countries. Can you speak a bit about that, about like the things that people told you um, in their stories about how housing abroad is different to, to in Ireland?
Wow. Yeah, it does feel like there can be kind of a failure of imagination in, in solutions, I think, for um, the Irish uh, housing market. Um, actually, Rory, that was one thing I was going to ask you. It feels like a lot of the conversation over the last few weeks is focused on ways to help people who are currently renting to buy a home. So is that the right direction? Is that the right way to kind of solve the problems with, with housing? Or is it more of a kind of Irish solution to an Irish problem to assume that home ownership should be the end goal? It was, is it like, it seems like we're focusing very much on like getting everybody to buy a home. And is that the right direction? Yeah, should we, or should we be kind of acknowledging, actually it's okay for people to want to rent for their for their entire lives, as long as we give them security and, you know, and, and that kind of sense of um, stability. One final question, and it's for, for all three of you. If you were given unlimited power, unlimited resources, what would your priority be for changing or for fixing housing in this country? Like what, what one thing would you do? I'll go to Conal first. Probably empower local authorities, definitely a lot more than they have been. 
yeah. get mass social housing building scale again those programs off the ground try and take away the blockages that you see here, here so often about from the department uh, and and give them give them uh, far more autonomy than they have right now I mean, I mean the thing is council, where, like, councils have been shown to be able to be to build still social homes they don't build as much as I think they'd like to or they want to and there can be a reluctance on the part of the conservatism I think on the part of some council officials but it can be done you know and as Rory was saying as well you know working with AHBs has been incredibly effective in some parts of Dublin City as well. Aoife what about you? And worry. It's been great to solve housing with all of you here today. I think we've got a, a lot of a roadmap here for fixing uh, everything. So now we just have to, to, to get it done. Uh, Colonel, we're going to be covering housing um, for the rest of this month as part of the Good Information Project. Do you want to give us an idea of what you're working on? Uh, you're the main reporter on this. Uh, what's going to be coming up on the journal over the coming month or over the coming weeks? Yeah, there's going to be lots of different things from human stories to kind of more, um, I suppose, deep dives into certain things. One of the things I'll be looking at now for tomorrow will be the pool bag SDZ. And was, we, we talked about the affordable units there. There's a whole back and forth and a lot of concern there. We're going to be looking at sort of big ideas as well, I suppose, to set, how, uh, solve the housing crisis from, from experts and, and academics. And um, we're putting that together. We also want to look at, we're going to be scrutinising, I suppose, the Land Development Agency. I'm sure I'll be back to you about this, Rory, um, <laughs> on this topic. We talk about whether that's going to actually be successful and go into a little bit of the detail and sort of a case study on that. We're also going to be talking, hopefully, talking to, to people who are, I suppose, living this, really, and talking to couples who are, who are, who are renting, you know, in their, their 40s or 50s. Lots of talking to a couple who are trying to buy a home and following their journey. So there's, there's lots to come up. And, and I suppose, as well, what I would just say is if we love people get in touch with us and, and give us their ideas and tell us what they want us to write about as well because I think that's really important what Rory was saying about having this kind of national conversation about it you know we have to you have to bring people in with you without getting too wonky about it yeah 100% and thanks to all three of you for being here today for being part of it that felt like a really strong kind of solutions focused discussion which I think is so important uh, and thanks to all the viewers for being here as well today for spending your lunch time with us um, and as Conal said we would absolutely love to hear from you about um, what you'd like to see us covering on housing um, for the next month um, because a big part of the Good Information Project is being led by readers you know we want this to be um, kind of about solutions and about what's actually happening on the ground rather than some kind of airy fairy uh, theoretical uh, discussion because it affects everybody living in this country it's very much reader led so please do give us a shout uh, you can email us, you can email Conal, uh, his email address is conal at thejournal.ie. You can tweet us, you can tweet me, it's at Christine Bohan, um, it's B-O-H-A-N. Um, you can also go on the site and sign up for our newsletter. If you search the Good Information Project and the journal, you will be brought to that. Um, so please do get in touch and thank you again for being here today and thanks to the panel for a really great discussion. Thanks and we will see you again. <laughs>